Hey, this is Kyle with Free Tours by Foot. I wanted to do another one of these walking tours, and a lot of people commented that there's been a strange new island that has popped up in the Hudson that you can tour in New York. And I know some of you may be confused by that because you say, how can a new island suddenly pop up? Well, I'm going to do a quick little walk around. We're going to show you because this is, in fact, a man-made island. It's not going to take very long to walk around because it is, in fact, also called Little Island. So we're gonna just get up and show you and I'll turn this around and start the tour. So this is Little Island. I know that you're thinking it doesn't really look like an island. It is a man-made island. And the man-made island that you're gonna see all these big columns jutting out, they're very obvious to see right there. They're all supposed to resemble tulip pots. There have been over 132 of them all arranged in a way to create this island. The um, general idea that they're going for right here, this kind of sense of it all, is that this is supposed to look like a wave in the water or also a floating leaf. And I think the leaf part is supposed to be like the, you know, on top, and the overall sense of it is the wave. But this was all a $260 million investment by one guy named Barry Diller, a wealthy, 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 wealthy New Yorker is basically all you need to know. He also put in some money to finish off the High Line as well, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. 2.4 acres, that's all it is. It's a very small, <laughs> they don't call it Little Island for no reason. Little Island was intentionally chosen as that name because it is just very small. And you'll see, we're going to walk around. It really will just probably take about 15 minutes to walk around all of this. When you're seeing off in the distance over here, all of this, those wooden kind of piles coming out right there, that's all remnants of Pier 55. All of this along the waterfront along the Hudson right there, which is where this is, was originally shipping. And... Pier 55 is a little bit less famous than Pier 54, which we'll talk about a little bit later on as well. But this is also called Little Island at Pier 55. Now, we're going to walk and just kind of do a quick little loop around here. And so the very first place we're walking is up these stairs. We're going to see what's called the amphitheater, or the amph. That's what they call it. It's the amphitheater, but they call it the amph. There's a, over 600 different seats available there. They're said in the original plan when this was originally created as an idea would there be an outdoor event space. They haven't fully taken advantage of it yet because we're still, this was open in the pandemic. And when I say this is new, I mean this was literally just opened in May of this year. This year being 2021 in case you're seeing this later on. So May of 2021 is when this was opened. So the big reason why this is the big reason why behind little island the big reason why this is kind of a big deal here is because it took over 10 years for little island to come to fruition uh barry dealer had this idea over 10 years ago and he went through a lot of different legal hoops to build this there was uh internal debate about whether or not there'd be damage to the fish colonies long story short essentially the courts found that there was no real damage to the fish. And so that's why this was just opened in the last year, but originally it was 10 years ago is when this was really proposed. And you get a good view of the Hudson over here. Hudson really important to all of this. Um, obviously named after Henry Hudson, one of the first Dutch explorers to the area. But before this, in the area, sorry, a little bit <laughs> wild with the camera work right there. Before any of this, this was actually an American Indian trading post around over here. So this was called the Sapohanikin, and that's where just is now you kind of think of it more as the meatpacking district or specifically within Chelsea. Chelsea kind of leads right into the meatpacking district. So it's the meatpacking district currently is the closest neighborhood to where you'd find Little Island. And the meatpacking district has kind of gone throughout this whole change throughout its time here in New York as well. Uh, in the early 1900s, there was just over 200 slaughterhouses. You got, and you get a good kind of view right there. That down there is where you're going to find a lot of food. Uh, so there's just like a little outdoor dining area that you can get food. But yeah, as I was saying, the meatpacking district was originally over 200 slaughterhouses. By early 1900, there were over 200 slaughterhouses, and there was an elevated train there to, you know, transport all of the different meat. 
by the 70s and the 80s, a lot of that had kind of hollowed out. And this actually became in the meatpacking district, not too close, not too far away. It was a very major LGBT hub. So there's a lot of artists, LGBT artists, and it's important to acknowledge all of their contributions to the neighborhood, what would later become really one of the most fashionable neighborhoods in New York in the meatpacking district. The Whitney is not too far away. The main thing that switched is in the uh, 1990s, there was a renewed call throughout all of New York to try and create more, more, I mean, it turned into gentrification, but all of this turned into away from some of the more gritty feel and into the kind of Disneyfication of New York in the 90s. And the meatpacking district was a big part of that as well. The, um, the, uh, the, the High Line, as we all know it as, this was a major conversion. And as I said, uh, Barry Diller was part of that. So in the High Line, that converted the whole uh, meatpacking district into this new, more hip, cool, interesting, gentrified way, right? And where we're climbing right now, we're going all the way up to the top of this, uh, of the highest point. And I just want to kind of get a good view from the side right here. This is a really nice view. So way off in the distance, that building kind of front and center, that's kind of hard to see, but that's the Empire State Building. Obviously, Empire State Building, tallest building in the world for over 40 years. Uh, it's maybe a little hard to see. I know it looks kind of smaller compared to the others. That's because it's a little further away. On the left-hand side, you're going to see a lot of buildings Part of the Hudson Yards revitalization and again that's just more of a recent revitalization as well. That building that kind of looks a little jagged with a piece cut out the side that's the edge that's kind of the newest that just opened within the last year as well that's the newest of all of these I guess what you'd call like rooftops or uh, observation decks is the word that I'm looking for. You're going to get another view of it right there and down below there's another view of the amphitheater. So basically where we're climbing right now, this is called the Southwest Overlook. And this is opposed to where we were. So kind of where we started off, we entered on the North Bridge. <clears throat> we took an immediate right. We went to the Northwest Overlook. Uh, we're actually going to the highest point, climbing up all these stairs, dodging all the people. <laughs> and we're going to the highest point of the park of Little Island. And again, this is called the Southwest Overlook. It's the highest point. It rises 63 feet above the Hudson. And if you can just battle through, you get really good views, right? And that's one thing that's important to note. And you can see, so over to the right over there, that's uh, Jersey City. So that's New Jersey. It's across the Hudson. Over to the left down there, you get a great view of Lower Manhattan. Obviously, to the tallest building of all those collections over there, that's One World Trade. One World Trade being the tallest building in the U.S., the tallest building in the entire Western Hemisphere as well. So you do kind of start to see over to the left over there, we'll talk a little bit more, is uh, a new development, even newer than wh where we are right now, that's going to be developed in the next two years, kind of showing part of that. But really, oh, in the distance over there, that's what I want to show you. Uh, you can see the Statue of Liberty. So that's what, kind of zooming in right there, way off in the distance. And I'll talk more about those new de newer developments in a second. But we're going to be climbing back down. Again, this is such a small island, <laughs> little island, if you will, that we went to the northwest overlook. That would be one corner. We already went to the southwest overlook, which is the other corner. We're going to kind of snake around and go through what's called the glade. And then we'll just pop out by the main plaza and main lawn and then exit out the south bridge, right? So... What I was getting at before, this is a newer development that will be opened in a couple of years, and that's going to be called the Gennesburg Peninsula. Peninsula, and obviously that's a Dutch word. That's because originally there was a street before, way before it was a meatpacking district, and there was a street called Gennesburg Street. Um, the Gennesburg Peninsula is going to be opening in two years, and it's actually going to have the first sandy beach of. Manhattan, so some people are excited for that. There's going to be uh, more open fields, more green space. There has been some criticism, maybe pretty fair, to say that there's been a lot of investment into parks around Manhattan. 
So obviously Central Park's conservancy is just flush with cash. You'll see a lot of these places along the Hudson on the west of Manhattan Island over here are just flush with cash. But then there's a lot of criticism because, you know, if you go into the Bronx, a lot of those places, those parks, conservancies are struggling to have cash. So there isn't exactly an equal representation. That said, you can see that they did a lot of really nice things here to uh, highlight all of the green space. I'm kind of a little curious what it will look like when we get to winter, but that's what you can kind of see right now, right? They have also announced um, di several different uh, artists in residence that will be for Little Island as well. Of course they have, because it's New York. Uh, people named Tina Landau, Michael McElroy, and the Pig Band Theater. Um, a lot of people wouldn't recognize most of those names. Uh, Landau was involved in the SpongeBob SquarePants, the Broadway musical, so I'm curious if he's going to bring SpongeBob to the, to the uh, or excuse me, she's going to bring SpongeBob to the island. Um, also, you have uh, the Pequen Theater, which they basically are involved in a lot of fringe festivals, right? Where are we going to walk? You just saw to the right over there. That's where the bathroom is. And uh, they do have really nice bathrooms, I'll just say, which is always an important thing in New York. And you do see people filming things here as well. Where we're climbing again, we're going up to the Glade. Um, and in the Glade, you're going to have like the last of these corners that we're going to visit while we're on our little tour here. And really important to note, something I kind of forgot to mention before, is that you can definitely visit Little Island. However, if you're coming here during the weekend, then you're going to need to make sure that you do a timed reservation entry if you're coming after noon. When I'm visiting right here, this is actually a Thursday. So it's a Thursday afternoon. You don't have to worry about it. You can just walk right in. But obviously, a lot more people, it's very busy, and they want to do timed entries, obviously because of the pandemic, and also just to like make it not feel so crowded, right? So you're going to want to make sure you pay attention to that. Straight ahead, what you see there, that's the Whitney Art Gallery. Um, Whitney Art Gallery has been in that spot in uh, New York since the 1930s. This is Pier 54. And you'll, you can kind of see a little bit. When we exit, you'll see more of it as well. But Pier 54 was the location where the Carpathia landed after the sinking of the Titanic. So fans of history will know that after the Titanic sank, then the Carpathia was the one, I get a little distracted right now, <laughs> by the crazy weird, ooh, yeah. They do have some of these interesting, you can kind of see me through the reflection right there. Getting a little distracted by the hypnotic spirals. Anyway, as I was saying before, um, the Carpathians, fans of history will know, were the was the ship that eventually did rescue the, many of the survivors of the Titanic. And so the Pier 54 is famous because that is where it docked with those survivors. That's the main reason why, it, and that was part of the reason why this was controversial, is because it did have this uh, kind of aura of history associated with it as well. And where we're scooting around right here, there is the main plaza. I mentioned it before, but you can get concessions there. Uh, the, all of that is pretty standard. You know, there's like a burger, there's like a hot dog, you can get beer, you can get wine. Uh, they boast unique cocktails, but um, they seem pretty, everything seems pretty standard right there. And we're kind of just doing our last little scoot around. You know, as I've said many times, it is very little. And so this is the main lawn right there, but uh, not able to just hang out on the main lawn. So you just have to kind of walk past and look at it. And we're going to do our final kind of exit right here. Over to the right, there are some interesting uh, kind of musical artistic installations that I, I kind of skipped past a little bit right there. But I find it a little interesting, you know, people hanging out here, sitting down, but not able to sit on the lawn. Uh, but they do have to protect the grass as well. And you see on this approach when we're exiting as well, straight ahead, you get a better view of that kind of metal sculpture, which is signifying that this is Pier 54. This is where the Carpathia landed after that Titanic sank. 
and that's straight ahead over there. Over to the right, you see, again, part of the Whitney, so it's easy to just jump over to the Whitney after this. It's easy to jump onto the High Line after this as well. And over to the left over there, that kind of brick building hiding, hiding down, that um, that's Chelsea Market, so it's easy to get food over here as well. It's a nice, easy day. It won't take you very long to see Little Island. Um, really, I mean, this video of me just walking around, it's like 15 minutes, but honestly, you know, you could spend some time here, you could get some food, but I wouldn't book too much time. You could uh, check out a lot of things afterwards, though. Hope you enjoyed the tour. We'll be back with future tours.